Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video, I'm just gonna hop right into it because I have a long day ahead of me of packaging up orders. It is Sunday, so it is the Sunday of Black Friday weekend. So it's been uh, two days that my Etsy shop has been on a 30% off sale. And I've almost sold out of everything that I have. It's been kind of crazy. Um, I have 66 orders to fulfill. Never have I ever seen that number ever before. Um, it's been crazy. It's been amazing. Uh, I can't even explain the feelings that I'm feeling right now. It's just kind of crazy. Um, and I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about what I should have prepared for. And I wasn't expecting as many sales as I got. So I really just, I, I know now what to do for next year. So this is my first year in business and I really am learning what I need to be prepared for, um, for next Black Friday. I will definitely be a lot more prepared, have a lot more candles. Um, I was planning to make a lot more candles for this Black Friday sale. However, when I started to make candles, I realized that I didn't have any more wick stickers. So I tried my best to try to order some in and I really only trust the ones from California Candle Supply. They're the only ones that I have ever used with my candles and I don't wanna just purchase anybody's wick stickers just to get them in really quickly to make candles with. So I did have a decent amount of candles up, but really not that many that I wanted to. So today's video will just be sharing with you guys me packaging up my orders talking about Black Friday talking about my experience and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed today's video I'm gonna try my best using my camera right here to get a good like bird's eye view shot of what I'm doing just so you guys can actually see exactly what I'm doing and I will walk you guys through the process of how I am going to tackle all of these orders and no I am not doing them all today um, I'm gonna be doing as many as I can today by myself and then tomorrow my boyfriend's gonna help me we set up like a little table over there and I have him do pretty much the very end of putting in the packing peanuts the thank you card and then taping it up and putting on the label and it works for us and makes it so so much easier and so much faster so let's go ahead and get right into packaging orders all right guys so this is where I'm gonna be doing all of the shipping right here so I went ahead and grabbed my boxes as well as my tissue paper. So this tissue paper is from Uline and it is actually a 20 inch by 30 inch um, like bigger piece of tissue paper. But I always go through and I cut off a little bit right here. So I cut off a little bit of the side and that is just so I am able to get a smaller size that is better sized for my um, wax melts as well as my tins. If I try to use that for um, the bigger sizes or even the whole full size, it just isn't that good of a size for me. And then it leaves this size right here, which is perfect for my candles. So that's typically how I do it. I just cut off a third of it and I use the third for my wax melts and then the bigger side for my candles. And then what I did was I went ahead and I put together five of my six by six by four inch boxes. And these are the white boxes by Uline and I have been really, really, really loving those just because I feel like they look a little bit nicer than just the standard brown boxes that you can get anywhere. And I also like the idea of um, creating a logo of my, a stamp of my logo and stamping that on the outer portion of the box just to make it look a little bit more professional. So what I'm gonna be showing you guys is how I package up five orders and how I do my system when I have uh, a good amount of orders that might get confusing when you don't know necessarily what you need to be doing and how to not get confused on what shipping label goes with what package. So I will just walk you guys through exactly what I do. So what I did before the video was I actually went through on all of these boxes and I wrote down the names of the people whose orders I need to package up and I put it on an area of the package where you aren't able to see it when I get the shipping label on here. So when I fold everything up, I fold these ones inward and then this one on top. So the shipping label is going to go right here. And I used to do the sticky note method, which is where I would just put a sticky note on all the boxes and put the name of the person. But I realized that that wasn't as efficient. I can just use a pen and write directly on the box. So much easier for me and I don't worry about the sticky notes falling off and not knowing 
whose package it is. So that is how I do it now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over to my little bookcase and I'm gonna go through and pick out the candles that need to go in each box and have them ready to go for when I'm packaging it up. All right, so everything has been pulled. All of the candles have gone into their appropriate boxes. So this just helps me out. I put everything into the box and I know exactly what shipping label needs to go on what box. So all I'm gonna do is just go through, package up everything, make sure it's really nice and padded and protected into the box. Um, add in a little thank you card and some samples and just kind of show you guys what it looks like when it's all packaged up. So before I do that, I actually remembered that I need to cut out um, pieces of bubble wrap that I'm going to need. So I will show you guys how I do that and kind of how I determine the size. So I don't really have a rhyme or reason to the exact length that I cut out for my bubble wrap, but I typically cut about this much, so this size for each of my candles. Sometimes it's a little bit longer, sometimes it's a little bit shorter, but generally it's about that size. So pulling out this first order, I have a habit of checking my candles and actually, if you guys can see that, do you see how there's that wax right there? That is something that I did not catch. So I always double check my orders before I actually ship them out. Um, at least I try my very best. There's definitely times where I don't catch something, but I try my very best to look through all orders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, grab a little paper towel and clean that up because I do not like having wax on the side like that. I also think that I just have kind of this habit of smelling my candles whenever I go to ship it. I, I do it probably 90% of the time. I will open up the lid and smell the candle before I ship it. I just have this weird just habit of doing that. I don't know, am I the only one? Does anybody else do that? Um, so I'm gonna grab my tape so it's right over here and then we are going to just roll it up kind of burrito style. That's how I like to think of it. So I do it from the corner and then about halfway, I start to wrap it up, fold it in a little bit more and then wrap it up. So just like that, take a little piece of tape, put it right on there, and then now it is ready for the bubble wrap. So I'm just gonna take this piece of bubble wrap. The bubbles are up facing the candle, and then I put about right there, and then I wrap it up. So I believe it covers the candle almost two times, so it just looks like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a very small layer of packing peanuts at the bottom of the box. All right, so about that much is how much I put in there. And then I fold down the sides, pop that right in there. And yes, I know I've gone back and forth before in my videos about how I am trying to find more eco-friendly options for packaging. I'm actually on the hunt right now for those uh, accordion-like craft paper that you can use to protect your candles. I have not been able to find them. I believe the Wooden Wick uses them, but that's definitely something that I am on the look for because I really like the look of them and I feel like it'll add a good amount of protection. Um, but at least I use eco-friendly packing peanuts, so that's definitely something. And then I just take the packing peanuts and I just kind of make sure it's protecting all the sides, but I like to keep the bottom right hand corner open because that's where I'm gonna put my sample. So I'm just gonna take my little sample, put it right there on the side, and then just fit the packing peanuts around everything. And we're gonna get the candle care card on there. On the opposite side, it's a little thank you card. I usually have that side facing up. And then from there, I just do a little shake test, just to make sure it feels pretty sturdy in there. And then I will fold that in, fold that up, and then tape it down. And the only other thing that I like to do, the last part of the package, is put on a little sticker of my logo, just because, I don't know, I think it looks cute. It adds in a different touch um, until I can get a little stamp made. So that is good to go. So we're gonna put that off to the side. All right, so we just finished that one. Now we're gonna move on to the next one. Just gonna check it, make sure it's good to go. 
and then again wrap it up the same way. I'm really glad that I pre-cut this because sometimes I don't and I'm constantly just cutting out a new piece of bubble wrap to use and it can definitely be a time suck. So my biggest tip for you guys with packaging up orders is make sure that you guys are trying to do things in batches. That seems to be the best way and the fastest way that I have found to package up orders. So what I will typically do when I am going to package up orders is I will look through the list of the orders that I have and I will pull out the boxes needed for those orders. So I have different sizes of boxes and I can pretty much tell looking at an order what box I'm gonna need for that order. So I will pull those boxes and make all of those boxes before I do anything. Then I'll make sure that I have enough of uh, tissue paper and I need to get better at making sure that I pre-cut for the bubble wrap as well. And that's just the fastest way that I have found to do it. So make sure that you are doing everything in batches as much as you can, um, just to save yourself time so you're not, you know, doing things out of order and doing things unnecessarily when you could have just prepped it ahead of time. So making sure that everything is prepped has been the best strategy that I've come up with with shipping because I had always thought to myself, am I just really slow with shipping? Because for me, if I'm packaging up 25 orders, I believe that has taken me four to five hours before. And to me, that kind of sounds crazy. It should be way less than that. But I don't know, maybe I'm just a little bit slower. Maybe I just get distracted really easily. It's probably that I just get really distracted. And that's why I am i can't show you guys everything that I'm packaging up in this video because it will just end up being way too long and I just need to kind of get my head down and make sure that I'm getting all of these orders so I can ship everything out tomorrow. Let me know in the comment section below how you guys like to personalize your boxes. Um, I'm really curious about it. I feel like that's kind of a fun way to be able to add more touches to your boxes. Is there anything that you guys do specifically? Do you guys use stickers? Do you use stamps? Do you get custom made boxes? I'm really curious how you guys go about customizing your boxes. I feel like I've gotten way more interested in the packaging aspect to everything um, more in the past couple of months than I did in the beginning. In the beginning, I was just thinking, what's the cheapest way I can ship this? and you know how can i make sure my candles don't break and those are still things that i'm thinking about but i'm also thinking about how is my package being received by the customer and um, that's also why i did make these and yes i will make a video on how i make these and more information about that in the future um, in a future video for you guys because this really has become just such a cute little touch to the package, especially when it's the first thing that the customer sees. I really, really like that. Now, the one thing, the one question that I always get about these matte black jars is that I love them more than anything. They're one of my favorite jars. However, they can be very hard to clean if you get any type of oil, candle, wax on them, fingerprints, because we have oils on our, finger, on our fingers. Um, it can be very hard. I learned to be okay with a little bit of marking on my jars. I used to be so, so particular that I would not chip out a jar if I had even a tiny little mark on the jar. Um, however, I really learned that not a lot of people are really focusing on um, the little marks on the jars. They more care about just the scent. And also you can't see the markings on the jar from far away. So if they're putting it on like their table or like a little nightstand or their bathroom or whatever you can't really see it from far away you can really only see it if you look up close and of course if i ever get a mark on there like a dripping of wax or something i'm not going to sell that candle but if there's a few little marks on the outside of the candle it's not the end of the world to me and i used to think it was and i uh, didn't use so many of my jars because of that reason but now i'm understanding that even when i'm shipping out those candles uh, knock on wood, I haven't gotten any complaints or any feedback in a really negative way about that. Um, so I feel like it's not as big of a deal as maybe us as candle makers feel. Even though we want to have the best product when we're shipping it out, um, it's also just kind of realistic to know that it's not going to be in perfect, flawless condition. And I just want to throw that in there because I feel like we can be really hard on ourselves. 
I know I have been, and I just kind of want to reassure everybody that if you are using jars like this, that that is a very, very real part of working with these matte black candles is that you will deal with smudges and fingerprints and all that kind of stuff. And it is so, so hard to get off, if not impossible. And a lot of you guys in the past, I've made videos on it before, but I know that many new people will probably come across this video and you guys haven't seen any of my other videos before, but these are little sample uh, wax melts clamshell molds and um, I get them from allwhitecandles.com. However, they have been sold out for the past couple of months. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to try to figure out another option of adding in samples into my orders because they have been sold out. Um, I have been adding in some tea light samples in the little burlap bags that I have. So that's also kind of an option. I just feel like these little clam chill molds are so much easier to store. I don't know how to store like 50 to 100 tea lights in a box without them kind of getting, you know, messed up because they don't have lids. The fact that these have lids is just really, really nice. But I know that the tea lights are really cute and really nice to give as samples as well. I really like giving those as samples. So in terms of Black Friday and kind of how I'm viewing Black Friday this year with my first experience of it in business, um, it's been pretty incredible. I decided to run a 30% off sale in my Etsy shop as well as a pretty good giveaway on Instagram. I decided to give away my entire winter collection in my matte black tins in my six ounce candles. So somebody is gonna win the entire uh, winter collection, which is six candles. So I thought that that was kind of just a really fun giveaway and something that people will actually want to get. Um, Cause I know that with giveaways, I mean, most, I mean, it's a free, it's a free item. So yeah, it's gonna be nice and somebody's gonna wanna get it. But I just kind of wanted to do something like extra special for the biggest shopping day of the year because I know that so many people are going to be spending money so why not give away something that somebody is either going to really love for themselves or possibly use as gifts for Christmas. I feel like it can really help somebody out. But so far I'm realizing that I definitely should have prepared a lot more um, but that is the story of my life. I am somebody who is kind of just a really big procrastinator and I don't really prepare as well as I could or as I should. Um, and that was just something that I just need to know and need to know for next time. Um, I should have started making candles way more earlier, weeks in advance, but I try to make more candles for Black Friday um, about five to seven days beforehand. And then of course I, uh, realized that I didn't have any more of my wick stickers. So that was a real bummer, but um, I'm getting my order in next week. I'm going to go pick it up and then I'm just gonna be kind of a crazy person just making candles for probably like three days straight. But it's been really awesome. I've always had kind of this dream of having my business, having a business and having like Black Friday sales and having so many sales and kind of being overwhelmed with it. And that's pretty much my reality right now of what I'm living in and it's the coolest thing ever. And if you are somebody who has purchased from me that is watching, I thank you guys so much. It just means the world to me to have you guys wanting to support me and try out my candles. Absolutely just really, really appreciate it. And I remembered in my last video, I talked about how I never include my business cards anymore because they were hidden on my other shelf at the other side of the room. So I need to start including my business cards in every order because um, yeah, it's good marketing to include in every order. And also um, I'm gonna need to create new business cards very soon. So I'm gonna try to get rid of all of those while I have them. So I know I asked this earlier in the video, I asked you guys a question, but I'm so curious with you guys watching this, um, if you guys have ever had a Black Friday uh, sale before, like is this your first year in business or have you guys experienced it before and what's your experience like? Um, I'm really, really curious. Also, I think I asked you guys a question earlier on in this video, but I'm so curious on my viewers watching this video, if you guys are in business currently, 
what have your Black Friday experiences been like? Because I know I mentioned this, this is my first year in business, so this is all I know so far. Um, but how do you guys prepare? What have you been doing? Um, what is kind of your outcome that you have experienced so far? I'm so interested to hear your guys' experience with it. So I hope you guys find it interesting on how my packaging has changed and upgraded over the past few months. And I will continue to show you the progression because I'm sure this is not the final way that I'm going to be packaging up everything. It's just how I'm doing it right now. And I like to look back and see, you know, how I used to do things and how I've, you know, grown and changed since then. So, um, but as of right now, I really hope you guys enjoyed, you know, seeing how I package everything. All right, guys, so that is all that I'm going to be showing you guys in today's video. Again, I really wish I could film myself packaging up all of these orders, but I feel like that's just gonna be too long of a video and that you guys kind of get the point. It's a little repetitive after a while, but I do take some time to just, you know, talk with you guys, share some things, share some knowledge on how I package up orders. So I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing today's video. If you did, make sure to leave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at MemoryBoxCandoCo. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.